Hello everyone. Welcome to Dinesh Trivial. My name is Dinesh Priyankara, Data Platform MVP and Business Intelligence Architect. Here's the third video related to Synapse Analytics. I have added the uh, uh, first video is all about uh, Synapse Analytics. So I discuss uh, the fundamental things, what are the components available, why we have to use Synapse Analytics, what sort of supports we get from Azure when we try to use Synapse Analytics for implementing things like data warehouse and big data implementation. That was my first video. Then I added another video on the hyperspace. That's something not exactly new, but uh, you know, it was uh, introduced recently. How we can add indexes on the files on the data lake and how we can uh, use these indexes for optimizing our big data engineering workloads. That was my second one. So third one, uh, let's talk about serverless SQL pool. If you have watched my uh, first video, you know that when we create or when we have Synapse workspace, we can have two type of SQL pools. One is dedicated SQL pool, other one is serverless SQL pool. So dedicated SQL pool, it is something you have to create. Uh, if you want to create a, a large scale data warehouse solution, you have to use dedicated SQL pool. So in that case, what is serverless SQL pool? Is it something we have to create? What you have to remember is, when you create a Synapse workspace, this is getting automatically created. So let's have a look on serverless SQL pool. What is it and how we can use it? What sort of workloads or what sort of operations we can uh, uh, you know, perform against this serverless SQL pool? Let's have a look on all of these things. Let me show you what I have planned for this uh, short video. So I'm going to take you through a set of slides uh, that explain what is serverless SQL pool and uh, what will happen when you make a request to serverless SQL pool, how it internally you know, manages things uh, in order to satisfy your request. Okay, so that's going to be the first part. Second part, uh, let's go through some use cases. What are the uh, ways of using serverless SQL pool when you have a requirement on uh, you know, implementing a data solution, right? Third one, uh, I know that I have not discussed much in terms of dedicated SQL pool, but let's have a, uh, you know, comparison. Let's let's have a look on the comparison uh, between serverless SQL pool and dedicated SQL pool. Then you can understand like when you have to use dedicated SQL pool and when you have to use serverless SQL pool, right? So once these three parts were done, uh, I'm going to uh, do a quick demo. So I'll, th these are the, uh, the one I have planned. So I'll be showing you how to perform a simple exploration, okay, using a serverless SQL pool. Uh, and uh, let me show you the way of performing some sort of transformation. Let's say you have a data in the data lake, you want to use serverless SQL pool to explore it first, and then, uh, you know, do some uh, data engineering workloads. Let's say you have to, you know, uh, make some adjustments to the data set or enrich the data set. So let's see how we can do something like that with serverless SQL pool. And I'll show you the way of writing the result back to the uh, data lake using serverless SQL pool. That's going to be the second demo. And the third demo, uh, let's have a look on the way of creating a data warehouse uh, using serverless SQL pool. All right. So that's what I have planned for this uh, video. Now let's try to understand what is serverless SQL pool. So this is something you get automatically. Whenever you create a workspace, Synapse workspace, you'll be seeing Synapse SQL pool, right? You don't need to create it. So it's a distributed data processing uh, system. We always talk about distributed processing, distributed storage when we work with data warehouses, when we work with big data. It's a very common thing to see with almost all systems now because we know that we need to have a storage that can be used for uh, now, storing data in a distributed manner that's one thing and we need to have a, a proper compute environment which can process our data in a distributed manner okay uh, so we have many different type of systems so serverless sql pool is something like that so this supports distributed data processing system which means it should or it can simply get our data and put it to multiple machines and then uh, uh, you know use our instructions for processing them uh, with these uh, individual machines and then finally combine and give the result to us that's what we see with serverless sql pool so we we know that when it comes to serverless if, if you see this serverless term with your system which mean that uh, there will be no fixed infrastructure set with the system so serverless sql pool is something like that you don't need to worry about 
maintaining infrastructure. Not only that, now this is all about distributed processing, which means we should see a cluster. If you think about Azure Databricks, if you think about, uh, uh, let's say, uh, even the Spark clusters, right? You have to configure. You have to configure the cluster saying this is the spec and I need this number of machine. I'm going to enable auto terminate, auto scaling. So you'll be doing a lot of things for, uh, you know, getting your environment prepared or setting up your cluster. But here it is not something like that. Synapse Workspace will create the serverless SQL pool for you. You are not going to, you know, uh, set up infrastructure. You are not going to set up the cluster. It's a ready-made distributed data processing environment. So I don't want to worry about uh, my cluster size, how many nodes I want, how nodes going to be allocated for, allocated for my uh, data engineering workloads. I don't want to worry about all of these things. I can simply use a serverless SQL pool for processing my data. Okay. Not only that, since there is no fixed infrastructure set up with your system, there won't be a cost, right? So you are not going to pay for Microsoft for, uh, you know, maintaining a serverless SQL pool. It is all about the usage. Whenever you try to use serverless SQL pool for seeing data, processing data, Okay, then you will be charged. If no one is using your serverless SQL pool, it is still available, right? It is not something like you pause it, right? Whenever someone wants to access it, it will be available. But until the first person tries to access a Synapse serverless SQL pool, there will be no charge. Okay, right. So this is what we call as serverless SQL pool. Let's try to understand how it works. When you create a workspace, what happens is uh, it creates a serverless uh, SQL pool automatically and uh, there should be a person who accept our request, right? Uh, I mean, the communication point, just like Hadoop, just like Databricks. So this also has something called control node or control unit. So this is the person, this is the computer we use for uh, communicating with our serverless SQL pool. This is available, right? Uh, so you, you, you don't need to worry about like, you know, starting and resuming this. This is available anytime you can connect with it. Okay. In addition to that, there will be nodes not allocated to you. So that's why I have graded it out. So there will be a lot of compute nodes. These are not storage units. Okay. These are not storage units. These are compute nodes, SQL Server instances. All right. But these are not immediately available for you. All these nodes will be available for you based on the request you make. Now, just to uh, you know, highlight certain things with the dedicated SQL pool. If you create the dedicated SQL pool, you will be seeing compute node getting allocated uh, whenever you start it. Okay, as soon as you start the uh, dedicated SQL pool, based on the DWs you have allocated, it will add compute nodes to your uh, dedicated SQL pool right but this is not something like that nodes will be allocated based on your request okay all right so let's see what happens when you make a request right okay before that you need to have a data lake in your synapse environment okay this is where you store data because not just like dedicated sql pool not when it's come to dedicated sql pool you have a storage configure which has 60 storage unit by default you you cannot uh, increase or you cannot decrease you will be always having 60 storage units but with serverless sql pool there is no link storage or there is no link data lake account okay it will basically uh, connect with your synapse workspace data lake it can connect with other things as as long as you have set the credential but by default it connects with your default data lake all right there is no tight relationship between serverless SQL pool and uh, the data storage. All right. Okay. Now, see, data engineer or application, uh, let's say, you know, I want to make a request. I want to analyze some data in the data lake. Okay. So in that case, I'm the data engineer or let's say application like Power BI or some reporting uh, uh, application. It tries to get some data from the data lake. Right. So either data engineer or application first thing is it, it needs to establish the connection right so request will be sent as a sql uh, job or i would say as a sql code let's say sql module 
all right so what it has is a sql set statement one or multiple statements so it comes to control node control node accept it and then it has to work on it now it needs to decide where you know what are the uh, uh, you know storage elements it has to access how many nodes it needs okay how data has to be pulled from uh, data lake and then distribute that data set among these uh, uh, allocated nodes so everything will be decided using something called distributed query processing engine this is a service serverless sql pool uses for accepting the request okay and then deciding how data storage has to be accessed and how data has to be moved and how things have to be processed not only that it decides how your instruction your sql module or sql code uh, should be split okay something like this it decides how it should be split and then it sends these instruction as tasks to the nodes okay so let's assume that it decides uh, to use these four nodes okay so these four nodes will be allocated to your serverless sql pool now now billing starts okay now billing starts you'll be charged now so it decides these four nodes to be used for satisfying your request and it splits your sql uh, command or instruction into multiple tasks and these tasks will be distributed with these four now there are many different ways of getting these things distributed it might distribute all these uh, tasks immediately four nodes or uh, you know as per my reading uh, this is what i have learned uh, you know one node might feels like it needs more nodes so in that case more nodes will be allocated at the runtime and then the, the task will be split further okay so that's how it works uh, in addition to that uh, it has to get the data so it will start communicating with the storage and get the data into uh, these nodes for that it will use an internal service called data moment service so data moment service is responsible for move data from your storage units to related uh, compute nodes so all these compute nodes are responsible for processing your request and then forming the final result so once the final result is formed that will be uh, uh, received by the control node and it will be sent to us this is how it works there are many other internal processes related to this uh, uh, you know this this process but we don't need to understand all the uh, internal processes related to this all you have to understand is how it works now how it decides how many uh, nodes have to be used for this how it decides at what time these nodes have to be allocated at what time these nodes have to be deallocated it's completely automated you don't need to worry about it and uh, you know uh, since you will be charged only for the uh, the nodes okay only for these nodes and the time those nodes have been used your cost will be very low when you when you compare with other systems available okay right this is how it works now let's try to understand uh, certain use cases okay now first thing is data exploration this is something we always see with uh, modern organization if you have converted your organization as a data driven organization you see this so there will be a dedicated team or at least one person who works with data that person tries its best to find something that has not been seen before okay that's called data exploration so let's say you have a department called mis or data science or there's a data scientist or data analyst so he wants to you know uh, uh, see some data and then do some experiments and uh, you know get some results produced he can simply use serverless sql pool but you need to make sure you have properly designed the whole thing you have the data lake it has multiple songs like raw curated uh, uh, songs like that and uh, you know data is available for everyone uh, everyone authorized so likewise uh, you know you need to make sure the entire environment is properly designed and up and running okay this is not an uh, in uh, how do i say like you know isolated component that can work alone this is a part of your synapse workspace okay so my assumption is like you know, everything is ready and the data analyst he can actually uh, connect with the data lake and perform some experiments so let's see how he how we can use serverless sql pool for doing uh, his experiments right so he'll be using tsql uh, 
uh, or I would say SQL for performing his uh, experiments, but this is what he's going to do. So let's say data lake has CSV file, JSON, Parquet. Uh, these are the file types uh, we see uh, uh, in terms of like, you know, supportive files ty file types in uh, serverless. There will be more, okay? Uh, and uh, this is the, the power user or let's say data analyst. He can simply use Synapse Studio for connecting with this data lake, right? It is really easy. I'll, I'll be showing it, okay? And then he can perform his exp uh, his exploration, right? If whatever the experiment he wants to perform, okay? So that's the first use case. This is really useful uh, because I have implemented solution for my clients. I see this, right? I, I can clearly see this. I can see my clients, how my clients uh, really, you know, uh, you know, see the benefits of serverless SQL pool, right? This is one. Second one is all about data transformation. So this is, uh, you know, I would say that, uh, yes, data scientists, data engineer, they will be performing, uh, uh, you know, various type of data transformation. So this is not limited to a uh, one team, okay? In this case, this use case is related to multiple uh, uh, data related roles, right? Okay, so we have, uh, data in the data lake, right? And then let's say data engineer, he wants to uh, process some data. Let's say in the row layer, uh, there, there are a set of uh, data files, could be CSV or could be Parquet. So he wants to access these files and then, uh, you know, make some adjustment, transform and summarize, and then put it to another layer. Uh, so, you know, from that layer onwards, let's say uh, that's the layer uh for data warehouse so data warehouse will consider that layer as a source so let's say this data engineer is responsible for getting the data from raw layer process and then place it back to the uh, curated layer okay so you he can use serverless sql pool for that so again he'll be using synapse studio get the data from uh, uh, your data lake process it okay he'll be processing it using uh, sql right and then the result can be sent back to the data lake. That's the second use case. Third one, uh, I have not implemented this, but uh, I'm trying to uh, you know, implement this with uh, one of my clients. That is for data warehousing. Now we know that we use dedicated SQL pool for creating data warehouses, okay? But you can simply use serverless SQL pool for creating your data warehouse. See. You have all the files. Let's say uh, we have a, a separate uh, container, okay, or file system that contains multiple folders for dimension data and fact data. Okay, right. I want to create my uh, dimension tables and the fact tables based on these folders, right, and then open it as a standard data warehouse. It is possible. So. In that case, should I bring data from data lake to uh, uh, my serverless SQL pool? You know that serverless SQL pool has no infrastructure. It, it basically, uh, I would say, has uh, compute nodes when we process data. Okay. So in that case, we are not going to bring in data from data lake to serverless SQL pool. So it's going to be a logical data warehouse. It's just like you're creating views. Okay, so data eng it's data engineer's responsibility for creating it. So he will be creating external tables. I'm sure that you are familiar with external table. If not, uh, I'll be showing certain things related to external tables as a part of my demonstration. So he'll be creating external tables and forming facts and dimension tables. So it is something like this. You have a di let's say you have a dimension table called customer. So customer table will be exist in the serverless SQL pool. You can create a database inside the serverless SQL pool uh, called data warehouse and then you can create a table called customer uh, that's going to be your dimension table and you can point that customer table to set of files or uh, one of the folders in the data lake so no data it's just a definition so if someone like let's say a standard user he tries to access the data warehouse okay so he he might use excel he might use uh, power bi so when he connects with the dedicated SQL pool database, he'll be seeing all these tables, right? It is just like a normal database. He will be able to create a model inside the Power BI, or he will be able to connect with it and get the data. Now, forget about basically, so let's say data engineer, 
let's say data engineer uh, opens management studio and then uh, try to access the data warehouse it is just like a normal database when he opens the logical data warehouse from the management studio he'll be seeing the standard tables he can get the table into query window write a select statement against it so whenever you make a request that process will happen the one we showed with the previous slide okay it will happen so when i say select all from my customer dimension serverless sql pool goes to a data lake and gets the data and send it to us that's what happened so it's completely transparent to the end user end user has no idea whether this is a serverless sql pool uh, or it's a dedicated sql pool all right so these are the use cases i see you you might come out with some other additional use cases but these are the use cases mentioned by microsoft and these are the things i see as well all right let's have a look on the uh, the differences between sql pool and dedicated sql pool let me uh, load all these points right so one thing you need to remember is uh, do i have more no right Okay, so one thing you need to remember is dedicated SQL pool is best for large data warehouses, right? You are going to have data inside the data warehouse. Of course, uh, you know, data layer and compute layer are decoupled, but it is linked, right? Uh, but when it comes to logical, uh, sorry, when it comes to a serverless SQL pool, uh, it's not tightly linked, right? You, you can simply use serverless SQL pool for uh, querying out data in the data lake. Okay, so you so you, you can simply use serverless SQL pool for creating logical data warehouse, or uh, you can use dedicated SQL pool for creating your standard MPP based uh, uh, distributed data warehouse. And serverless SQL pool is good for small data warehouses. Okay, do not plan the very big data warehouses with serverless SQL pool. I'm not saying it is impossible. It is possible. But if you feel like your data warehouse is going to be a very large, in that case, consider dedicated SQL pool. And serverless SQL pool is good for uh, unplanned ad hoc analytics. And uh, when it's come to dedicated SQL pool, it is all about predefined, uh, planned, structured analytics. Okay, serverless SQL pool is always available. Only thing is first person, right? Let's say no connections are available. You know, no connection exists in serverless SQL pool. In that case, first person. Uh, will experience some sort of slowness after that yes it, it works really well but dedicated it comes come to dedicated SQL pool uh, if if you know that no one is going to use your dedicated SQL pool let's say in the weekend so you can pause it so after after you pause the data warehouse then no one will be able to access the data warehouse unless you start it okay and uh, in terms of the cost you have no idea about the cost you, you can actually predict but we basically consider as unpredictable cost but when it's come to dedicated sql pool uh it, it is all like you you can actually uh predict the cost because you you know how it is going to be used you know how we design dimensions and facts right it's based on predictable queries so you will be able to calculate the cost it is not exactly the cost you are going to see as a you know the monthly cost but up to some extent you'll be able to uh, you know estimate it all right so we talk about serverless sql pool it's time for doing the demonstration so let's try to uh, you know go through all the all three use cases and uh, see how we can use serverless sql pool all right uh, so let's have a look on all of these things with synapse so i have already created a synapse workspace called nsql synapse test 01 and uh, I have logged into my Azure and I have uh, opened my Synapse workspace. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this open button for opening the Synapse Studio. First of all, let's have a look on the data, right? So let me go into data and uh, go into a link tab. Did I click it? Yes. Right, if I expand it, you can see uh, the default or the one I have created when I was creating the Synapse workspace, that's the data lake that I've been created. It's a part of Synapse workspace creation. So if I expand it, uh, you'll be seeing multiple uh, containers or the file systems. Uh, I'm going to explore uh, one of the uh, containers. So I have one call, uh, call data. So let me click on that. So when you uh, go into it, you can see uh, multiple uh, folders. I can go into something like uh, CDR data and uh, 
year 2019 and then let me go to second quarter and uh, month six and then i can see two folders and uh, that is uh, june 25 it has one csc file and if i go back and go into the next folder it has another file that is related to uh, june 26 now you don't need to understand uh, uh, the structure of this so uh, what's the business logic behind it just for the demonstration i created this uh, call data container and added uh, two folders one for cdr records you know uh, it is not exactly uh, uh, i would say uh, uh, you know telco data okay i have just form uh, some sample data so cdr data folder uh, if you go like if i go into call data container it has cdr data folder so basically uh, you know this is how let, let's assume that this is how we maintain cdr records coming from telco covers okay so we, we get data from uh, uh, tel uh, telco towers and we place these uh, uh, files into date folders okay so that's why i have year 2019 quarter two month six folders inside that i have a subfolder for uh, this date okay so now if i go into month six i should see uh, folders for all the dates but for demonstration purposes i have created only two folders okay now how do i start exploring all of these things okay now one thing i can do is i can go into this and then i can right click on this file uh, i can see two options one is new notebook i can uh, get this file loaded to a data frame and then i can use python scala uh, or whatever my preferred language for uh, you know performing my experiment but since we are talking about serverless sql pool now let's say one of the uh, data engineers or one of the uh, uh, data analysts he wants to analyze this data so how how he can start with serverless sql pool so i can simply select new sql script instead of notebook then i can see uh, three items select rows external create external table and then bulk load so i'm going to select select top 100 rows now this is what i get now i'm going to collapse this window just to make sure that you all can see the entire code okay now see it creates a code with the open row set uh, function if you are familiar with the sql server you know that this is something we we have been using for getting from external uh, sources getting data from external sources so we can see the same thing with serverless sql pool now see it has selected master database and connect to built-in so built-in means serverless sql pool okay if i expand it uh, i can I, you know i, I can see a menu item called manage pools so i can go into it and then i can create uh, additional clusters okay additional spark clusters that's something uh, uh, you know something we have to discuss in the separate video uh, but built-in means serverless sql pool and inside the serverless sql pool you can create multiple databases but I'm, I'm, I'm going to use the existing one which is the master default one see open row set and with the bulk uh, uh, close i can simply pass the entire path so this is the path for the file see start from https my uh, uh, data lake okay and the standard protocols right dfs dfs core windows net and all the folders and the file right and the format version i can simply execute this okay let me execute this again right it is getting executed so it might take few uh, seconds to uh, getting it uh, initiated right if the cluster is not up and running now i can see so this is a sim simplified uh, file so uh, you know it basically shows caller number or the per this, this is the you know the caller number right the person who dialed the number this is the number related to the person who received the call start time end time duration and the cells in the tower used for this call that's what we see here right so don't worry about the data set but i'll be uh, you know using the last column for performing a very simple transformation just to show you how we can perform some transformation transformations and then write them back to the uh, data lake right so this is how you get it now rather than writing all these codes i'm going to open a ready-made code that saves time so let me go to my uh, develop section and then load this code okay right i can see the same code this is the same code 
right getting data from uh, 2019 06 25 file so it works right now how do i do uh, additional things now see this code okay what i'm trying to do is uh, not just reading data from one file i'm trying to read data from multiple files so see i have mentioned here saying i want to go into the month equal six folder if you remember the hierarchy and all the date folders and all the files now you need to make sure that you have uh, in a csv files with the same format okay otherwise you might experience some issues but see i can simply add wildcards like this and say i want to read multiple files multiple folders so data engineer or data scientist he can simply explore multiple files now see uh, this is a very simple transformation oops sorry sorry for that i'm just trying to group it by uh, year of this right the the date related this call month and day and get the count let me execute and see how quickly we can get it so it will get the data from two folders okay since i have only two folders and i can see uh, year month date and the number of records okay so i can see both have same number of records do not worry about it right but rather than adding okay rather than adding a location like this if i want i can create a source and keep it it's just like that if you have used databricks you know that you can mount storage something like that so in order to do that you should not use the master uh, if i'm not mistaken you cannot use the master so you have to create a new database so i'm going to create a new database how would i see drop here so right create database call uh, uh, call data execute so this creates a database in my serverless sql pool call call data and then i can go into it i don't see it here i'm going to click on refresh done i can see my database now go into it all right then what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a data source c create external data source call calls that's a name and i'm going to give this path so um path is you can see up to month month six okay let me create it done all right and then i'm going to execute the same query this time as you see i'm not going to mention the entire path i'll be I'll, I'll be instructing this guy saying use data source calls okay and my path is then to wildcard something like this all right so i'll be seeing the same result okay let's see yeah so i'm seeing the same result so likewise i can use this data source for many other things now this is an example for setting a schema what i see is you know something like this no columns so i can set the schema um, I hope you are familiar with the concept called read uh, uh, schema on read. Okay, so that's what we do here. So I'm going to get a result generated and I'm going to set a schema for that. So the first column, that's number one, ID. Second column, this and C. I'm mentioning it as seventh column because I know my last column is seventh column and it has all the cells. Right, so you, you use one base index, not zero base index, one base index. So let me execute this. Now I can see the caller uh, number and the cells that have been used for that call. All right, uh, so I can uh, do a few more experiments. There are uh, two functions available when you access data through these data lake files, file name and file path. Okay, see. I'm going to say that show me the file name for this. All right. So now I'm, I'm not going to use the data source here. I'm just mentioning the file path and I can execute this. I'm getting, I'm trying to get all the columns. But in addition to that, you can see I'm trying to call a function called file name. Let me execute this. See, I get the file name. So I should be seeing both 25 and 26. If I, uh, sorry, this is just one file. Sorry, my mistake. Okay. Right. Let me uh, see the other function, which is called file path. This is file name. So I can see, uh, I, I can get the file path as well. See, it gives me the file path. I'm not adding other columns because it, it, it uh, you know, then I had to scroll uh, left and right. But see, I can see the entire file path. 
So if you have a requirement for getting the file name for some reason for producing the result, or you want to make it make sure that file path is going to be a part of your uh, produced result, you can use file path and file name functions. Okay. Uh, when it's come to file path, it accepts the index as well. See this one. Okay. Uh, I'm calling file path by passing one, calling file path by, by passing two, and then the uh, the standard file path without a value so what it does is it uh, it it goes through the path and then it gives me the last part when i do not uh, pass the uh, uh, number right that's the path for this now see earlier when i was uh, executing file path function i i saw the entire file now i see the first fold and the file name why because I'm referring calls data source. So when it's come to calls data source, it is configured up to the month. So when it's come to file path, the rest is the file path. And in that file path, I have two parts. Okay. So I can get the first part from this, second part from this. So something like in you know, a first file card and the second file card from this. All right. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, this is all about uh, you know setting a schema for the same. I can add a schema for this, and then the oh, sorry, see the result. See, ID caller A sales and the file path. So all good. Let me skip this code. It is the same, and uh, let me take this now. See, I can use file path function for filtering as well. Let me increase the height a little bit. See, okay. So I uh, you know I have added file path one as the filter. So now here I'm referring all the folders, but uh, since I'm adding this filter, I should see data related to first file only. Okay. So likewise, you can use file name and file path functions as you want. Now, see, if I want to get the count of cells that have been used for each call, right? So you have to treat this as an array, like if you use something like Spark or Scala code or Python code, you can easily do it. All you have to do is just right click on this file and get the, the data set loaded to a data frame. After that, you can uh, use, uh, you know, uh, arrays, split functions and many things. Uh, there are many ways of getting it done. So, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be really flexible if you use something like, uh, you know, a Scala or Python, but we can do most of the things uh, inside the serverless SQL pool. See. What I'm doing is uh, I'm reading data from calls data source and uh, you know all the files. In the I'm setting this uh, schema. In addition to that, see I'm getting these cells and then use string split function. This is a, a, a TSQL function which is available with the serverless SQL pool as well as SQL Server. So it it's split the string. So I'm going to pass the delimiter as pipe, right? In addition to that, I'm going to use cross apply for joining this result with uh, this part, this is open or row set results. So again, cross apply is available with TSQL. If you have used, you know that this is something we use for joining a result coming from the table and joining result coming from a function, right? So I can simply use this to uh, uh, split it. And then uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, now this will add multiple rows. For each cell, it will add multiple rows. For example, for this record, there will be multiple records for each of these cells. So rather than taking that value into the select statement, I'm going to group it by these two and get the count. So in that case, I can easily find how many cells in the tower uh, have been used for each call. Okay, so th these are the exploration we do. This is a very simple one, but you can see, you know, first call 16 cells, 10 cells, 14 cells. Okay. This is how uh, the cells have been used for each call. All right. So I hope you understood the exploration part. Now uh, let's try to uh, see how we can, you know, write things back to the data lake. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this transform, sorry, I'm going to save this transform data to the data lake. For that, I have a container called curated data. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a, an external data source point to this curated data uh, file system or the container. Now, I don't want to pass credential for this. Okay. 
Why? Because this data lake is part of this workspace. But if you are trying to save data to a data lake, which is not a part of this uh, data lake, then you need to pass the credential as well. Okay, right. So let's uh, create this external source. Done. And then uh, uh, I'm going to create an external table for that needs a format. So external file format. So th these are the things you have seen with uh, even with Microsoft SQL Server when you create file format. So when you create external tables, you have to create the source, you have to create the credentials, you have to create format, and then you have to create the external table. Okay, this is not available with Azure SQL database, but if you have used dedicated SQL pool or oh, SQL data warehouse, that's that's the name we use earlier, then you you know about it, right? But uh, you know if if not, then uh, do not worry. I'm going to create another uh, video on that so you can learn all these things later. So basically, I'm going to create an external table, right? Because that's the only way of writing things back to the data lake using serverless SQL pool. Okay, right. So I'm going to write all the, the, the result back to the serverless, uh, sorry, data lake as parquet files. So I'm going to define the format saying file format is the name, right? And then the format is parquet and I'm going to say that, okay, use snappy for uh, compressing data. Okay, right. Let me uh, execute this done. And then I'm going to create this external table. This is a select statement I showed you uh, with the previous uh, uh, code, right? So it generates call ID and uh, the number of cells that have been used for that call, right? So I want to save this. I want to save it in a, a folder called cell usage. Remember, this folder should not be exist in the uh, uh, you know uh, data lake, right? If it is there, you need to drop it as you know for testing purposes. I think I have created it before. Let me go into my uh, data lake. Go to curated data container. So I can see this folder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, delete it. Okay, now I don't have anything in this uh, container. Let me go back to my code. Right. So I'm going to execute this code. It creates an external table called call cell usage okay and this is the location uh, and it uses the data source i just created and the, it uses file format i just created okay this is what we call as like you know create table as select right the, you know so we are, we are we are extending it to external tables right now let's see uh, so i'm going to execute this it should write data back to the data lake So this is a very simple transformation, but we can understand the way of working with serverless SQL pool, perform some uh, experiments. And if you want to save the result, results can be saved, right? So code, uh, code work well. Let me go here and then refresh. I can see the folder. I can go into it. I can see the uh, parquet file. See, okay. And if I want, I can write a select statement. Uh, since I'm in call data uh, database, I should be able to see the data. Okay, right. So this is how you, uh, you know, perform uh, data exploration. And this is how you uh, write, transform data back to the data lake. One more demo. How we can create a logical data warehouse. I'm going to use a ready-made code again. Uh, let me go to my develop and then data warehouse script. So everything has been executed. So I'm, I'm not going to execute it again. So uh, just like the previous one, this statement creates a database and then uh, uh, go into that database. Okay. And I'm creating an external data source point to my sales data warehouse uh, container. Let me go to the data section again uh, here and show you this. Basic, basic data and uh, sales DW. That's a container. So this has multiple folders. So a uh, sales folder is my fact table folder and all other table, other folders are dimension tables. Now, for example, if I go into customer, I can see customer CSC file, right? If I go into uh, sales uh, and there I have, you can see multiple uh, 
uh, folders for year and then the uh, one file for the year right so in in real world if you really think about the production environment you'll be seeing year folder quarter folder month folder and date folder but just to show you i have simply placed yearly files into these folders all right so that's what i'm going to use for creating my uh, data warehouse where is my code Here's the one. all right so see i create the data source then i create the external file format okay all delimited text earlier one was a parquet fun but this is a, a text file field uh, terminator comma string uh, uh, delimiter is double quotes and the first row is the first one because i don't have any headers see how we create external table you create the external table set the schema because this schema is not coming from the file okay we define the schema as we want and then give the path saying product slash all the csc file because it goes to my container sales dw container and then it looks for product folder and all the CSE file. So likewise, I have created all the external tables. Okay. Now, if I execute this select statement, uh, I should see records. Yeah. See. If I execute sales table, I should see all my uh, sales record. So creating these folders, placing files, that is going to be a separate task. Okay. But what you have to remember is we can simply form a logical data warehouse based on all these folders and make it available as a data warehouse. Now, for example, I can connect with this using Power BI. Let me quickly show you how to connect to this data warehouse using Power BI and uh, you know, create a very simple uh, uh, visual, right? Let me open a Power BI file I have already created. Okay, this is my Power BI file, right? So this Power BI file has been created by importing data from my logical data warehouse, which has been formed using serverless SQL pool in Synapse, right? So you see tables, calendar, product, sales, and uh, all the tables we have created uh, in serverless SQL pool. If I go to the model, I can see my uh, sort of a star schema, right? So now, if I'm the person who have created this one, I have no idea whether it is uh, it is a really data warehouse or uh, you know physical database or not. It's completely transparent to me. All I had to do is just connect with the uh, uh, database. So how can I connect, right? Uh, you know, it's all about go to get data, and then you can connect just like the way you connect with Azure SQL database or SQL database. Okay, so I can click on more, and then uh, I can select something like. Uh, Azure, all right, and then I have Azure. I'm going to select Azure SQL database. Uh, let, let me see whether I can uh, see more option with Azure because things are getting added. I need to uh, check and see under Azure. We have Synapse uh, Analytics SQL. See, I can select this Synapse Analytics SQL. Uh, Azure Synapse Analysis Services uh, database for Postgre, right? Okay, so I can select this Synapse Analytics SQL, connect, and then I should be prompted for server name and the database name. So what is the server name? I need to go back to my Synapse workspace and get the server name copied, right? I can go to this tab and uh, this is my endpoint, right? See, serverless SQL pool endpoint, right? I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back and then access it see my user id is sql admin user uh, i believe that i can remember the password i said let me go back right set this and the database is sales dw all right uh, if i click on ok i should be prompted for the password unless it is already cached yeah it is already cached so otherwise you'll be entering the user id and the password you said so you can create additional users or you can use a user you have added to the Synapse workspace. See, I can see my tables and uh, I can get the data. I'm not going to import it. Just want to show you the way of uh, you know, using this logical data warehouse. So everything is uh, available. We don't recommend you to uh, you know try to connect directly to this and have it as a real time because you know that these are not databases and uh, real tables. So it's always better to import data into your model and then build reports on top of that. All right.
done so uh, i took you through set of demonstration i hope you understood uh, serverless sql pool and uh, how you can use them uh, so if you have any question just uh, you know put it as a comment uh, i'll try my best to uh, reply immediately but expect a delay all right okay that's all from my end thank you very much for uh, watching this video expect more on synapse analytics <music>